I started in 1979 was my first rank. I was not a Cub Scout. I made Eagle Scout in 1984. So after college, um, moved to a new town, didn't know anyone. So I joined with a troop in Fairborn, Ohio. Uh, eventually was a scout master for them. Took the troop to Philmont. Got married, so then I had to step back from being the scoutmaster, but I still stayed involved with the Order of the Arrow then. Other than a short break when my son was born, I've been involved as a, a leader in scouting since then. I work for the Ohio Environmental Protection Agency. I'm a geologist with them. I review groundwater quality reports from uh, landfills, make sure that the uh, landfills aren't contaminating the local drinking water. So that's the East Lake landfill garbage dump. We don't do anything oversight wise on it. It's out of the post closure care. It has the wells around it. As people go for a walk, you can see those kind of located around, but they don't actively sample or anything. Scouting, you, you develop a love for the environment, right? So a former scout leader found out I was studying geology at Ohio State and he called me and said, hey, come on out, let's uh, get you introduced to this and see if this is what you really want to do. So he was able to help get me my first job right out of college. A lot of the skills, um, especially knots, I can't tell you how many knots I'd have to use. We'd have to tie down the tarp to, as a wind block because we're working during the winter. And I teach the bowline knot to like everybody that I had worked with. We use balers. You have to tie a rope to it so you don't lose it down the well. And I've never lost a baler down a well because because I've used my bowline. I would say the summit for summer camp when we went there because um, for me personally, the adults kind of just went and we were able to go and have our own play. Stu uh, the scouts were in their merit badge sessions and we were out zip lining. It's Halliburton. Uh, was another great experience living on an island for a week. Top scouting experience though, I mean just last year we were at Philmont, both my son and daughter were in the same crew, so I got to spend a uh, seven days out with them climbing to 10,000 foot mountains. I uh, keep working at it. It's, uh, you never know what the experience is going to be. So even on the camp out where you don't think there's gonna be a lot, you may surprise yourself and find like, that's the real learning experience that you, you keep with you. And you'll find that you remember most of the, uh, the bad weather ones. You know, those are the memories you keep, but there's a lot of sunny days out there too. This month, Troop 75 shines the eagle spotlight on Justin Glia. In his years with the troop, Justin was patrol leader, chaplain's aide, den chief, troop guide, quartermaster, and senior patrol leader. As an original member of the Spartan Patrol, which would eventually become the Deltas, he earned 28 merit badges, camped 246 nights, and hiked 300 miles on the AT. Justin says being an Eagle Scout not only taught him to work hard and accept criticism, but also how to deal with others and effectively communicate with his co-workers. He looks back fondly on his first Klondike. It was below zero without the wind chill, but when the wind kicked up, it could feel like 25 below. He says he remembers being encouraged by the older Scouts to stay tough. Justin and his patrol mates actually stuffed zero degree sleeping bags inside other zero degree bags just to keep warm in their tents. Like everyone else, Justin has his own McGee moment. He says, quote, I remember McGee saying, if you want something done, ask a busy person. All of a sudden I realized everyone was asking me. 
It was like a light bulb clicked on and I had my own aha moment. To the future of Troop 75, Justin says, a good leader is a good follower. Make sure you understand who you are leading and what it is you want to accomplish. Justin Glia, Troop 75, Eagle Scout. Oh, stewardess. Chief, this weather bulletin just came off the wire. Johnny, what can you make out of this? This? Well, I can make a cap, or a brooch, or a pterodactyl. Could you, um... This month, I'm talking about the piece of camping gear I can't live without. I use it every single camp out, warm weather, cold weather, inside, outside, doesn't matter. I am using it every single camp out. What is it? Simple microfiber washcloth. Now, normally, if you see them at the store, and they're gonna cost a dollar, maybe, they're gonna be bigger. I can get two out of this. I'll just cut it right down the center and sew a little seam, because I don't need anything more than just this little rectangle. It's universal. I can use it a hundred different ways. I can make a cap, or a brooch, or pterodactyl. It's a towel, first off, so when it rains overnight, and it's going to rain, you can wipe off your seat in the morning, wipe off some gear. If you're a cook, it's a great pot holder. In the summertime, you can soak this, stick it around your neck, and it's gonna cool you down on a hot day. But that's not what I use it for. I use it for sleeping. You're not supposed to put your face in your sleeping bag, right? But your face is gonna get cold, so I lay the towel across my face. Already, I can feel the heat being trapped on my face. I love it. Yeah, this is how I look when I sleep on a camp out. But nobody sees me, and my face is warm, so I don't care. It's a little bit of a blindfold. That way, first light, the sun isn't coming into my eyeballs. Someone in the middle of the night is shining their flashlight all around looking at things. Not gonna wake me up because I have the universal, highly recommended microfiber washcloth. Good evening, Troop 75, and once again, here is your Scoutmaster Minute. And you know, I'm gonna ask Mr. Ferdine to go ahead and start his timer to see if we can keep this to one minute. So, as we continue to pursue greatness within our troop, I think it's really important that we take a, a minute to examine our attitude in light of that greatness and the pursuit of it. So, if our troop has great talent, but we have a rotten attitude, the result is gonna be that we have a bad team. If our troop has great talent and we have a bad attitude, the result of our team is going to be an average team. If we have a great talent as a troop but an average attitude, our results are gonna be, we end up with a good team. And if we have great talent as a troop and a good attitude, our result is a great team or greatness. If you want outstanding results, you need good people with awesome attitudes and that's what we're looking for here in Troop 75. So I want you to take a look at your own attitude and put that against the success and or failures of your patrol and the troop. If you think the troop is succeeding, great, look at your attitude. Does it drive right back to that? And if you think the troop or your patrol is failing, can you look at your attitude and see why that failing might be happening? It's okay if you know what your attitude is and you can relate it right back to it. So. What is your attitude and how is it today?